G'day everyone, Lucas here from the Aussie Gamers Experience and today I'm making a video on something that is very near and dear to my heart. It's a very nostalgic video I'm making here on Australia's Wonderland that used to be down here in Sydney. And uh, just the, the other day my wife said to me, have a look at this and it was a, a link from a Facebook page, page about this uh, recreation of, a, of Australia's Wonderland made in a game called Planet Coaster. Anyway, she g gave me the link and I checked it out and saw that it was uh, made by a person. I'll pop their name up on the screen to give them proper credit. Um, they uh, made it inside this game called Planet Coaster and it's available for free on Steam. Planet Coaster is not free, the Wonderland um, recreation is so uh, I went and bought myself a copy of Planet Coaster just so I could come and check this out and take a walk down memory lane so during this video I'm going to uh, explore the park in Planet Coaster and uh, along we go we're gonna tell some stories that I can possibly remember because this is probably about 25 ish years ago uh, was probably the last time that I went to Wonderland Sydney and for those that don't know um, it's no longer there it has been closed for I think since 2001 2000 early 2000s it was closed down and it's now just a bunch of uh, factories warehouses and sort of um, uh, like a like a industrial area now it's no longer a place of fun I have some very good memories there and I look forward to going through all of this and we'll show up some photos of the uh, the actual park and I've got some uh, information on uh, where some of the memorabilia is however it may be unobtainable but we'll see let's go into this lovely recreation of Australia's Wonderland Sydney Okay, we are loaded in now. So if you want to get this yourself, if you have Planet Coaster on Steam for PC and you want to download this and have a look for yourself, I will leave the link in the description. Um, however, be warned, it does take quite some time to load to get to this point. So if you're doing it yourself and it takes a long time, it's not hanging, or well, maybe, I guess, but uh, for me, it, it takes like a good two to three minutes to load which is a long time for games these days so keep that in mind it's uh, it's probably not hanging it just takes a long time all right uh, let's continue and now the controls are quite janky uh, and I'm not quite used to them so uh, this could be a little bit tricky to navigate around but we'll make do so this is Wonderland Sydney now that's very similar to the original uh, Wonderland Sydney uh, signage out the front not exactly but pretty damn good and they did change it at one stage uh, to include I think it was the Incredible Hulk and Spider-Man on there as well uh, alright let's start moving around and we'll get oh let's move up a little bit and we'll move out there we go now starting off with the car park I know it's probably a little bit boring but even the car park looks kind of familiar I think they've even recreated that with uh, a certain degree of accuracy uh, I don't know about these little turnstile things I think that might be there for the sake of the game but uh, I don't remember them being there but this car park looks quite similar anyway it's probably not that uh, amazing but let's uh, let's go back down Uh, now these are entrance points here. I'll see if I can pop up a photo, if I can find a photo on the web about it. But that uh, should come showing this, but that looks pretty accurate to uh, to my memory. This section here, where you would actually walk in, which is pretty awesome. Even this section here. Uh, I don't have exact memory of it, but it looks like you walk through like a. Uh, a gift shop which makes sense they did like to uh, sell a lot of memorabilia to make money um, but yeah I think that's uh, the, well that's what's there there's a actually this is the uh, the entrance sign let me see if I can get it 
on screen. There we go. This is the entrance sign that I think they changed for the uh, the one with the Hulk and Spider-Man on it. But yeah, this looks uh, very accurate. Uh, look, the whole thing is damn accurate. I'm so blown away by this. I have had a look at it prior to this video. But yeah, here is sort of like the uh, place where you would initially walk in and you're greeted by oh, these like sort of old style buildings which were obviously made to look in this way that it wasn't the, the style of the time because this um, uh, Wonderland was opened in 1984 I think that's correct or was it 85 anyway it was uh, a couple of years after I was born so this place opened I was brand new I was like two years old We've got a, a pirate ship here, and what they used to do in this section of the water, which was really cool and incorporate this pirate ship, is that they would do these live shows, and they would have jet skis running around in the water, um, we'd have like uh, actors, well, actors jumping off the top of the pirate ship, um, well it's not really a pirate ship, it's just a ship I guess, uh, this thing here is the pirate ship, we'll get to that in a minute. But yeah, they would be jumping off into the water and having fights on the ship and yeah, zooming around in the water on jet skis and jumping and flipping and I still really enjoy watching it, so good. Um, these like basketball games, I remember playing them, they were definitely there, all these sort of like carny games. Uh, what's this one? This is the Eye Striker. Oh, okay, it's like the hammer thing. I don't remember that. Uh, what's this over here? Is this the dodging cars? In the jousting ring. There you go. That's uh, That was something that I often did. Um, uh, the thing as well with um, Australia's Wonderland, it was quite expensive to get in. I don't remember how much it was. Obviously, I was just a kid and never did any of that. My mum and dad did that. Um, it was quite expensive to get in, but all of the rides were free. You just had to line up, uh, but the games you had to pay for separately. Um, so yeah, you didn't have to pay extra to, to, to get on the rides. You literally, that was your entrance fee and you just lined up. Now, this is the pirate ship. Now, this is a spaceship, but that's not what it was in real life. It was a pirate ship. It was similar to this thing over here smaller version on this and this ride would literally slowly ramp up and it would go and this obviously will do it, it will play out uh, people got on and it would slowly ramp up and go up and higher and higher and higher until the point where sometimes it would hang upside down and then eventually come right around and do loop the loop uh, I uh, am a little ashamed to say I never had the courage to go onto this one. I wasn't so worried about going upside down, but I just didn't like the idea of when it would hang and get stuck upside down. Now, obviously, it never got stuck as in people had to be rescued, but it would hang upside down for probably like 10 seconds, 15 seconds before doing a full revolution. And that is what I uh, really didn't like. Is it going to go? We'll come back to it. We'll come back to it and see if it uh, eventually takes off. But yeah, that was the uh, the pirate ship. Oh, here it goes. Yeah, this is uh, that's that's exactly what that ride did. And other than it being a spaceship, it was actually a pirate ship. Um, that's pretty much exactly what it looked like. Had the counterweight at the top there and this uh, this design. And uh, yeah, it would cr just uh, slowly get momentum and keep going up higher and higher. So this sec this part of the ride was pretty tame, really. It was You weren't really going up really high until it started to get real high and spin right around. But anyway, I guess we don't need to see that. All right, which way should we go? Let's go across this way here. What is this? Oh, that is like the is it the flying gondolas or something. Uh, I think I may have a photo of that that I'll put up. The Skyhawk. Uh, I also have a photo of that which will pop up on the screen. 
we'll go through into here. Now there was something in this area that was uh, really up my alley. And, uh, we, we haven't got to it yet, but I absolutely loved it. Uh, this was a fairly tame ride. It would just sort of spin like a coin. Nothing too amazing there. Uh, and what do we have in here? Oh, that's the Skyhawk again. Banjo's Bakery, that was actually there. I wonder how much they've made of that. Okay, it's just a window. Uh, this one here, I think, is the... Uh, uh, what do they call it? I think the sign's here. There it is, the Tasmanian Devil. Uh, if you don't know what a Tasmanian Devil is, it's like a little rodent thing. Tasmania, they're like crazy little things. And that's what the ride was. And it got quite fast. I have vivid memories of coming into this area here and there was like a place where you could buy lollies and sweets and I remember getting this like goo stuff it was like slime but it was edible and it was great I loved it uh, now this part here now it's not recreated here but I'm pretty sure this is the area where it was I'm pretty sure I remember there being steering wheels here and a forward and go lever there was like probably four of them, I don't, I don't remember. Uh, and they controlled remote controlled boats. And the boats were in, so in, the, in this pond. And they were all wireless. And you could literally, you had to pay, put like, I don't know, a couple of bucks in. And you could just use the steering wheel and steer around these little boats. It was quite simple, but I absolutely loved it. And every time we went there, I was always at mom. Can I do the remote control boats? Is, uh, and it's something that I've never really gotten over. I really love remote controlled things, so that's cool. Uh, Snowy River Rampage. Let's ha have a look at this one. I love how they've got like the entrances as well. Um, but yeah, you come through here, up over here. And I, I did go on this a probably a couple of times, but not too many, because the line was always pretty big for this one, because it was a ride that wasn't scary and wasn't terribly dangerous um, uh, now we won't go into what happened in Queensland uh, but you would sit in these massive rubber tubes with all the seating and stuff like that and then you would go around the uh, the track and be all downhill and it was quite fun and it was one of the rides that I could get my mum to go on with me there we go there's one going through I think there's anyone on that one though uh, yeah, because my mum would never go on any of the rides with me because she was like, uh, no way, too scary. But this was one that she would happily get on with me. So that was good memories. And then it would come back around here and you would eventually get off. You could line up and do it again if you want or go on something else. So, let's, uh, let's keep going. They've even recreated all of the food stalls, which is pretty cool. And then we come to, okay, this is the beach. Now this was, um, what does it says opening 1988. I'm pretty sure that was opened while I was a little bit older. I don't think that's correct. Look, I might be wrong. I'm sure this person researched it, but um, I remember that being opened. So I'm sure it was later than that. But anyway, um, Oh, look, I don't know. It could be correct. But yeah, this was a water park that was added in here. I wasn't a big fan of it. I've never been a big fan of swimming and pools and stuff like that. So, but we did go there. Uh, the Bush Beast. Yeah, I did have a couple of runs on that. And this is recreated so brilliantly. Even the fact that this was all wooden. You walked up here. This is where you got onto the ride. Let's have a look in there. That's all accurate to my memory. And then the ride, well, there it goes. Perfect timing. We come around here. And this is where the ride would essentially start. So it would go up here. And then it would be mechanically cranked all the way up to the top. And then my understanding is the rest of it is just physics. 
it, it actually lets go of the um, thing that pulled it up the hill and the rest of it is just gravity you would run around and this is recreated so fantastically there's the bush beast However, I remember uh, I couldn't go on this one for quite a while because there was a height requirement. I wonder if the height requirement's here. You know the whole, you must be this tall to ride. Uh, so I couldn't go on that one, but there was the, uh, the, the, the beastie, which is at the other side of the park, which I could go on first. And that was kind of like my practice run. All right, let's, uh, let's go across this way now. Uh, I could probably spend hours in here showing you everything, but uh, we're not going to have an hour, hours long video. This one here would probably have to be my favorite attraction of Australia's Wonderland, and it is the Demon. And there's the entrance sign there, Demon. And you would walk through, and once again, so accurate, Demon Manor. Walk through. Get in line once again. You don't have to pay. You can just get in line. So if you went on a day where it was uh, particularly uh, empty, you could do multiple runs really quickly. But there wasn't too many people. And yeah, the ride would start here. It would drag you all the way to the top, and then it would drop you. And you would come and you would do kind of like a corkscrew motion through here, which is exactly how they made it. Then a loop the loop, and then you would go up here, and then you'd do it all again in reverse. And it come back this way, go up there, and then stop where it is right now underneath the, um, the housing there. And that was um, the demon. And I used to always smack my ear on the, um, the harness when we'd go around the corkscrew bit. I'd always come out with a burning red hot ear from it being smacked. All right, move on to Space Probe. Now, uh, most people would remember that they actually called it the Space Probe 7. Uh, and it's because it was uh, heavily sponsored by Channel 7, the TV uh, commercial TV channel. Um, but yeah, I never had the courage to get onto this thing. It is basically a massive drop. So you sit on, well, on there. It's exactly what it looked like. It would slowly bring you all the way to the top, which would give you an amazing view of the park because of its positioning and it would take you all the way to the top and then there were TV screens inside here the only reason I know this is because I watched a making of um, special on Channel 7 when they were making it and releasing it and there's TV screens inside and it says something about like an alien invasion and then there's a countdown uh, on the screens that are around there and then you would drop it would be an absolute free fall drop until electromagnets would grab you at the end and stop you yeah, I was too scared to go on that one, so that never happened for me. Um, the Zodiac, this is one that my wife says that she absolutely loved. We got the sign, the Zodiac there, and uh, they've recreated that pretty uh, pretty well as well. A uh, very tame ride. It's basically kind of like a, uh, what do you call those? Um, uh, is it a Ferris wheel? I think that's what they're called. Anyway, just those things that would, would turn around like that, but it was double-sided. So while people were doing the ride, people would get off and then get on, and it was very efficient. It's quite good. It gave you a pretty good view of the park as well. Um, and was uh, uh, pretty good. Uh, look, I don't know. I can't remember if I went on that. I probably didn't. I probably thought it was too boring. Uh, we have Hanna-Barbera Land. So this was where we had all of our Flintstone stuff and things like that. Uh, fairly accurate sign uh, to what it was. Um, and this was a place that we would always visit. And inside here, it was kind of like a, a theme, theme land inside of the theme park. And uh, I don't have too many memories of what went on in here, but it had yeah, some eateries and a couple of games and stuff. Uh, this one, I went on. I went on this. I do remember going on this. It was like a haunted house theme when you would go inside. What was it called? What's the name here? Let's see if I can find out what it was. Probably just the haunted house, but that would spin really fast. It doesn't look exactly true to scale. I'm pretty sure it was a little bit bigger and had a bit more of a 
bit more of a shape to it, but there's that. I don't think he spent much time. He or she, I don't know if it was a he or she that made this, I don't know. Okay, where can we go next? Ah, oh, this one here is, I think this is Fred Flintstone's Splashdown. See if we can find the sign. Oh yeah, there it is. Fred Flintstone's Splashdown. Now this one was good if it was a hot day. You could come and sit. Well, it was not sit. You could come and stand near here and you would get wet from the water splashing. Um, and you would most likely get wet if you rode on it. It wasn't an exciting ride. It was a little bit of a, a thrill coming down here, but it was more just fun and it cooled you down and things like that. So, And often when we went, it was so hot. So, so hot. Okay, and here we have the beastie. This is the like the mini bush beast. So we've got the beastie here. And once again, this thing is recreated so perfectly. I remember all of this. And it was all made of wood as well. Um, all these old school roller coasters were of wooden construction. Which is a bit scary because they looked old and rotten. But I don't know, they never fell apart. Uh, except for the demon, that one was modernized with uh, steel. But yeah, this is recreated perfectly. I don't know how they make, how we did it. Or she, he or she did it. I don't know how they did it, recreating these roller coasters exactly how they were. What does this sign say? Please remain seated and keep arms and legs inside the train. Uh, but yes, yeah, it's a shame that it was back in the day before smartphones and everyone had a camera we had still cameras i actually do have some photos that i think my mom and dad do um at home however they'd be uh packed away somewhere i'd have to search for them which i haven't gone to the effort of doing but this person who has made recreated wonderland in planet coaster has done such a fantastic job that the nostalgia is real and it floods home all of this and it all just fits like I just feel like this guy either had the schematics or some sort of map or worked there maybe or maybe all of the above because this truly is magnificent and it's sad that it's no longer there there was a couple of attempts to revive it and save it before it closed Unfortunately, that all failed, and now it's all just boring factories in an industrial area where it used to be a place of super fun. But there you go. That's um, that's all I've got for you guys. This is my tour of Australia's Wonderland in Sydney. Eastern Creek is where it was. Ah, oh, how I wish I could take my daughter to this place. I only have fun memories of this place. So amazing. Jeez, nostalgia is a powerful thing. It's very emotive. There you go. Thank you very much for checking out this video. If you went to Australia's Wonderland in Sydney and share these nostalgic moments with me, please put a comment in the comment section down below. Oh, look, the, the pirate ship's still in the loot, the loot. There you go. Yeah, put a comment in the comment section. Click like if you enjoyed the video. If you didn't like it, press the thumbs down button. It's all good. Oh, wow. Check it out for yourself if you like. As I said, all the links are in the description down below. Thank you very much for everyone that came and joined me for this trip down memory lane. And until next time, my name is Lucas from the Aussie Gamers Experience. And I will see you.